So, guys, we're getting to chronic kidney disease over here. Again, I'll put it here, chronic kidney disease. And just to recap, how is it with the glomerular filtration? Okay, so I'm going to make a graph over here. And what we're going to do is... This is a graph. It's going to have like two Y axis and one X. And I'm going to put here 120, 180, 60, 40, 20, 0. And then I'm going to put a special one. I'm going to put 15 here. I'm going to put the 60, that's very important, over here. Maybe I could put 30 over here. That's important. And that's it. And then I will put over here, I will put, this is 4. I will put like 28 here. I will put like 20 here. And I will put like 12 here. Guess what? This is serum creatinine and over here I'm um, on the other side I will and delete this one sorry so and I, over here I'm gonna put the like 320 over here of course zero is here I'll put 40 here I put 120 here and I put 240 and this is of course this is milligrams per deciliter and over here you got milligrams per deciliter but this is what well all of you know it's bun and the way it works is that 120 is like normal average young kidneys young person that's the gfr of course so this is gfr and this is milliliters per minute okay and in a way in europe how, how do we have it? Like 120, 130 is a highway, okay? Then we have like 60, 50, that's in the city. And let's say 20 or 15, it's like a pedestrian area, okay? So these are the speeds you can drive. And this is these are pretty the same number. So remember, highway, city, and pedestrian area. So these are the speed limits. And we are very nearby because remember, and I will draw it over here. This is the curve for it, and it's the same as for bun and creatinine, okay? Of course, you just use the different, you just use the different axis, okay? So basically with this, you can see 60 is not a big change till 60. So if you're till 60, it's a minimal increase of bun and creatinine. So till 60, it's okay. So glomerular filtration rate till 60 is for kidneys is still okay. And you won't see, you won't have any problems. Okay. Yeah. But as you go behind 60, you're going to have azotemia already. Okay. And the other limit is 15. The other limit is 15. And I will still put the 30 over here. I'll tell you why, but still. Yellow, you are already having problems. You are already starting to have problems. You are definitely starting to have azotemia in blood. You don't have to have any clinical signs. But if you take the blood, bun and creatinine is higher. If you go below 60. So this is the yellow area. Okay. So over here, you are getting worse and worse. You are starting to having maybe some kind of anemia, some kind of hypocalcemia, some kind of hyperphosphatemia. Okay. But still, you can sort of live. Okay. But once you go below 15, once you enter with the car, the pedestrian area, you have uremia and you are not functioning. Kidneys are dead in their function. Okay. 
So remember below 15, that's the uremia. So pedestrian speed, pedestrian area speed is uremia. It's end of the story. It's dialysis, okay? This is dialysis. Over 60, it's okay. So it's normal function in a way, but already you can have some problems. So what you're going to put over 60, how this can start? Well, those are all the ones we talked about and we didn't even talk about because we talked about these in mineral metabolism, in our metabolism. Because remember, over here, what you can put is, I'll put it in green. So you can have RTAs, so renal tubular acidosis and whatever, okay? There are some markers, if you're getting near and near to 60 GFR, there are some markers of kidney, let's say, disturbance, okay? Some damage. So markers of kidney damage. And guess what? We can put anything from nephritic to nephrotic over here. So if you're having glomerulonephritis or nephrotic syndrome, you can still be with a GFR over 60, but it's the first sign. You are losing proteins. Your GFR can be still okay, but you are already, you have some signs in urine and whatever. So put over here nephrotic, nephritics, nephritic spectrum, whatever. You can have hematuria, you can have proteinuria, but GFR is still fine. You don't have azotemia, okay? You can have what? You can have hypertension because you're having the nephritic syndrome. Although you're over 60 still, you are like, you know, rather like driving out of the city or highway even. But you are having some signs of problem, but it's not serious in a way. Well, if you're having nephrotic syndrome, it's serious. But like still, the GFR is okay. So with the respect to azotemia, it's okay. And you can have a hypertension due to kidney problem but once you go below 60 we are talking about kidney disease okay like serious kidney disease and you're having a problem and over here the limit is let's say 30 because till 30 it can be pretty much asymptomatic in terms of you know, when you pass the 30, you, you got azotemia over here. You, you know, it's already higher. It's already higher, okay? But below 30, it means already you very likely will have. So, and it can start earlier. Hyperkalemia, okay? You can have acidosis, okay? You can have increased PTH because there is a osteodystrophy. You can have high phosphate, okay? You can have bleeding because there is a decreased function of the thrombocytes, white blood cells, and you can have definitely low EPO, so you're gonna have anemia, okay? So as it goes below 60, you will start to have these problems. But you won't have the uremic problems because still the GFR is okay. But once you reach the 15, you're having uremia and you're gonna have all the problems with uremic syndrome. So pericarditis, arrhythmia, colitis, okay? But watch out. So dialysis, it depends. If the potassium goes up earlier, well, you have to do dialysis. But if there is only anemia, you can just give EPO and the patient is fine. But in all the cases anyways, you're gonna treat them with what? ACE inhibitors in most uh, cases of the cases, okay? So this is one point of view on chronic kidney disease. Because you monitor the chronic kidney disease or you define the chronic kidney disease by two things. And we talked about it already, but again, you define it by GFR, as I told you now. So 
when it gets below 60 milliliters per minute, yeah, it's chronic kidney disease. And you don't have to, you know, you don't have to think of anything else. As the GFR decreases below 60, this guy has a chronic kidney disease, which is, which is going to end with end-stage renal disease if you won't help him anyway. And the sooner you'll help him, the, the longer maybe the kidneys will survive, okay? So that's one of the, one part of the definition. Three months. If over three months you're having GFR under 60, under 60 milliliters per minute, you're having a definitely chronic kidney disease. So there's one definition by a number, but watch out, that's one part. The other part of the definition is we don't care about GFR. Basically GFR can be over 90, which is very nice. But if I'm gonna have some functional or structural problems within the kidneys, it's defined as well as chronic kidney disease because I can have anemia already, whatever the cause is, or something else, okay? So chronic kidney disease means, the other part is, GFR can be over 90 milliliters per minute, but, plus I'm having some functional or structural abnormality. Don't forget one obvious structural abnormality is a polycystic kidneys. It's, it's one way. It's genetic and there are cyst forms, they're compressing the interstitium, you're losing the functional parenchyma and you're gonna sooner or later have stones and you're going to fail very soon, okay? And it's like one-way road. So that's the definition or the thing you should imagine under chronic kidney diseases. And watch out, any of them, well, it depends what happens, but still you can have acute kidney injury to it because of ischemia, okay? Yeah, and still most common causes, most common causes of chronic kidney disease and we're going to name them again so guess what well the from the glomerulonephrosis or non-proliferative glomerulonephritis it's diabetes mellitus plus hypertension that's the most common cause then we can have watch out we have a players non-steroidals watch out they can cause this and they can cause glomerulonephritis, okay? And with the glomerulonephritis, remember all kinds, but as I told you, IgA in adults, nephropathy, that's Berger, although it can be pretty acute, okay? Or in other words, remember in general all the glomerulonephritis. And with the inherited, remember, polycystic kidney disease, so inherited cysts which are appearing more and more on a CT or sonogram or as you want. And with the treatment, with the chronic disease, again, I'm repeating it. If you get to uremia, you have to do dialysis. If potassium goes up, you have to do dialysis. But if there is hypocalcemia, you can give vitamin D. If there's anemia, you can give EPO, okay? If there is hyperphosphatemia, you can give oral phosphate binders, okay? So these drugs bind phosphates and you get rid of them, okay? Can we, oh, yeah? Can we repeat the, the last... Uh, oral phosphate summary? binders. For the phosphate, you typically have phosphatemia in chronic kidney disease. So you can give oral phosphate binders, okay? These are special drugs that bind the phosphate and you're getting rid of it, okay? Remember, uremia, acidosis, Fluid overload, which I didn't mention over here, fluid overload. If there's too much of fluid and you are at risk of congestive heart failure, you have to do dialysis, okay? 
So always think of what you're able to, you know, treat with some special drugs and the rest you have to treat with dialysis and at the end with transplantation. Okay. So that's chronic kidney disease. Remember the GFR numbers, but it's not ultimate. You can have a pretty nice GFR, but if the structural or functional uh, problems appear for whatever the reason, although the GFR is okay, and it typically turns chronic, you know, if you're just having proteinuria serious, but GFR is okay, well, you are having chronic kidney disease, okay? Yeah. And last one, end stage renal disease. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.